What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to take a look at adding images to schedules. I mean, you can actually do this. You can add your own images to schedules, which is great. And this, in a way, will be a follow-up to the Smart Keynote schedule, Smart Keynote tool, Smart Keynote creation that I made a couple weeks ago. And so this is, in a way, a follow-up to that because I've gotten some questions from not only people on YouTube, but on in my office about how to do this. And what they like to do is not just to see a number next to uh, the description of what the keynote is within the schedule, but to see the image of the actual keynote that you're going to look at on the floor plan or any other view, they might use it. So before we get into it, if you would please demolish that like button, if you happen to learn something, which I sure hope you do, that's kind of the point, that's why you're here. Like, come on guys, okay. Here we go, getting into it now. So where we left off in the last video, we ended up making these floor plan notes, site plan notes, basically just from scratch. And so we have these keynotes, and we can see them here on the floor plan. And I, if I click on one, I have all these different instance parameters that I can work with, which is, you know, the keynote, basically what it says, what it is. In this case, it's just, it's text, it's all text. But then I've got a type mark, which is what we're actually seeing in the keynote. And then my... Uh, note type, which, whatever type it is in this case, because it's a floor plan, I'm calling this floor. And if I come to my site plan here, I can see I have some scattered about. And I would go to my site plan. And so once I go to my site plan, I can see I have one out here and it's just new grass, whatever. Yeah, not a big deal. But coming to my site plan notes, I can see here we go. Hey, there's the, there's the number, there's the keynote itself, and then the actual type. I would end up hiding this last column in both, but I'm leaving it just so you can see what it's doing. I'm using this to filter between them because they would all fall within one schedule. So, okay, we're at this point, but like I said, if we come back to the floor plan, a lot of times people either feel more comfortable or it just makes more sense to have this zero one or whatever it is with the circle, whatever your keynote looks like, have that show up in place of the actual one like zero one there like i would want to see the keynote there so how can we do that well it is fairly simple so what we can do is come into the schedule and of course we want to come to our fields and we want to end up adding another parameter and this is going to be specifically for the schedule so here we go let's do that i'm just going to call this image because i mean that's what we're working with right and then come down to my type of parameter and i can look at that i can see there's actually an image and it changes the group to graphics, which isn't a big deal, but sure, I like that. Now, I want to make this an instance because if for some reason I have start using types, type parameters as opposed to instance, I wouldn't want to ha just have to use one single image. Now, maybe you find a way to make it work to where you could use one single type and it's kind of referring to all of them, but what we want to do is have 01 show up here and 02 and 03, you know, like basically have that always show up under each one of the keynotes. Okay, here we go. So that's all we need to do right now. And I'll just put this at the top. Cool. And so basically, again, we're going to replace this with number. And so right now I have image and it says none because I have no image. But I can actually basically look for a file. And I, I can literally add image files here in the manage images. And you can find manage images up here in the insert tab. And then there's manage images. So basically you just add them here. And then we can literally bring those into the schedule and it can show up okay so let's now go to photoshop because that's what we need to do we need to work with photoshop to get us all these keynotes okay and so let's go ahead and create a new and I, you know i don't know the best size to do this but i i know we want to keep it small it doesn't need to be big but let's do 250 by 250 in a resolution of 150 sure so let's create that and so we're going to have a nice box to work with, and that's really what we want. And, you know, there's two steps to this, which is going to be adding the circle. In this case, we're going to match what I have. So we'll just add this circle here. And after I add a circle, it all I want to do at that point is just then add my text. So if I come up to this rectangular marquee tool, I'll choose the elliptical. I want to make sure I come up here to the top and just get basically the corner. I'm holding down shift at this point, and I can see, all right, you know, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And so at this point, I'll un unlock my layer. So I'll come up here to the rectangular marquee tool, choose elliptical. And I don't want this quite going to the edge because otherwise the stroke I add to it will end up going over. So we're, we can get it pretty close, but I want to hold down shift so I can get, you know, a perfect circle. And we're going to rearrange this in just a second, but I can right click anywhere and then choose stroke. 
and you know this doesn't matter so much but maybe five we'll center it you know whatever press ok and at that point we can see there's my circle I mean that's what I want and so now I can just move this and basically center that up right there and you know that's fine looks good so all that's left is to make my text and you probably want to use a similar or the same font when you do this because that just seems to make a little more sense of course I want to make this black and it's gonna be zero one we're gonna start with zero one and I believe I was using something like Arial in Revit that you know it seems to make the most sense to to match and I just need to obviously change the size here to make it fit <laughs> and that's about all we have to do and with that I will place it on the center and then once we get it there all we have to do is maybe fix the size for sure just exactly what I need maybe I'll put that at 60 that probably will work a little better and with that there we go I'm very happy with this it seems to be working quite well this is exactly what I want so there's my zero one and so with this I mean it, we just need to load into our product so let's go ahead and make sure we save this and I'm gonna save this as a PNG not that it's a huge deal but it sure will help and with that saved we can come back to Revit and we can just go into our manage images here and I want to add an image of course because we have the one we just made and that's gonna be right here there's my zero one and look at that there we go I'm press OK and wait for a moment we still currently see none because we haven't actually added it yet well we need to do that so when I click none here there's I've got my three dots which means I want to browse to this image and I can literally choose the image press OK and so suddenly there's my zero one PNG file so I don't see it in the schedule which I mean is or isn't a big deal I don't care it's kind of up to you but uh, when we come in here this is exactly what we wanted to see now <laughs> obviously we can say it's a little bit big not quite the size that I need but it might be perfect for you maybe you want something that big obviously it's bigger than my actual keynote so that seems a bit silly um, but until then I mean I, besides that it's fine and so really all I need to do is you know make one for the next keynote and the next keynote and the next keynote so this would be the argument against doing doing something like that for this and that's because you know it doesn't quite make sense to do that because maybe you have 30 something keynotes well if you already have these made somewhere and you can just save them somewhere and you know, basically make them and access them for, through multiple projects maybe it's worth doing that's kind of up to you obviously get them where you want them to be as far as size and everything but you know they do work well and it does I mean it does exactly what we wanted to do so let's finish the job here so right now if we look at this well I don't need to see this note type I don't need to see the number I, I want to see that number so I, how do we make this look exactly right well first thing we can do is just hide this column we don't need to we don't need it at all and then for the image well I want to actually rename this to number because now that we're using this as our number numbering system it doesn't matter what the ti what the title is the name it's just changing the name and so for this number I still want to make sure that I am sorted by that which is going to be my type marker I want to make sure that I'm still sorted by that because it's not nothing nothing can be sorted by the image in a way that I want it to you know I, like I don't have any information tied to it so I want to make sure that I'm still sorting by this number but I just want to hide the column you know we're really just hiding things we don't want to see so when I come back here this is exactly what I want to see I see my number which is literally my keynote number and then my actual keynote that's great my information so let's make this look a little better and like center the text or something like that well at the very least what I want to do is probably select this column and I can just align this vertically in the middle because I mean that's that looks ten times better and so all my text will be aligned to the center of this now ideally you have the text closer to the size of the keynote or at least this keynote not nearly as big so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut the video and I'm gonna make another one so zero two and I'm gonna scale it down probably to half this size and so we can see what it looks like and uh, see if we're happy with it okay here we go so we're back and I've made both zero one and zero two the smaller size but I have both of them so I can come in here to my zero two and go ahead and add this here and so there's my zero two and I actually haven't done anything to zero one yet but what I can come in here and do as a I think this is Revit 2020 even I think I can come in here and just press reload I saved over this image and so I can just simply reload this and so now I suddenly have the image that is exactly what I want because I've already overrode that. That's great. So over here, 
we're looking at the schedule. Okay, yeah, looks a little bit big still. And it might be that just this is as small as it gets because I, I literally half the size and that just might be the way it is, you know. This isn't the end of the world, uh, but it is a bit obnoxious. Again, if you have something like 20 or 30 of these, it seems absurd because a lot of times my text just has one line <laughs> and I don't need much of much more than that. Now, last thing I want to say is if I zoom in here, I can see slightly the box here. <laughs> so if you really want to go above and beyond, I might end up... Uh, masking out the area outside the keynote just to make it look a little more clean if you're going to make a bunch of these and use them i would do that so i've even halved the size of the image and the resolution i've halved all that stuff but i'm not actually sure what's causing this to be the size it is but <laughs> i had a realization here that it's probably the column width so if i look at it here i could see well <laughs> it's this wide and my guess just in my head is that if I make this bigger or smaller, that this image size will stretch to fit that. And so let's go ahead and try that out. If I make this smaller, let's see what happens. And sure enough, I get smaller numbers. Now, the issue here is that I finally get to the point where I can't read this number because, you know, it just goes to another line. And so that's kind of up to you as to how happy you are with that. Um, ideally, I could see both of them. But, you know, I mean, we could obviously make some sort of a workaround to where um, we could just add a number here, the number sign, and then just be done with it and walk away. <laughs> so this does work, uh, except I can't, I don't know, it, it's not bad. It's it's an alternative, it's an option, it's something that I think is worth exploring because it is nice to be able to see this. I can't say that it's necessarily worth it in the end because of how many images you might have to make given the number of keynotes that you might have, but at the end of the day, that's up to you. And this, that's how to do it, really. We have added images into schedules and not only have we done that we've done that in a way that we can use that to reference keynotes within our schedule and within our floor plan so you know please go watch that first video if you're not familiar with these smart keynotes and the way i've i've done things here go check out that video first because that will really help you get to this point and then from there you know try these images let me know what you think of it if you like it uh, if you use it i've seen a lot of images used mainly for like finished schedules where they have or furniture schedules, especially where they'll have an image of the furniture and then every all the bit of information after that. I could see it used for materials or finished schedules because you could have what the material looked like or you know any sort of texture of it as an image for reference in your documents, which is cool. And that's kind of the purpose of images, but we're using it and I, I would think taking it one step further here in that we have it referencing, not truly referencing, but it, you're literally referencing the keynotes that you've made to create the schedule which i think is really useful so let me know if you do like this if not whatever it's not a big deal but if you happen to learn something please demolish that like button it really helps me out quite a lot and i thank you all who have well that will do it i hope you all have a wonderful day see you in the next video thanks so much for watching